Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Quiet, numbskulls, I'm broadcasting. Can we get serious now? One thing that did happen during the 60s was some music of an unusual or experimental nature did get recorded and did get released. Now look at who the executives were in those companies at those times. Not hip young guys. These were cigar chomping old guys who looked at the product that came and said, I don't know. Who knows what it is? Record it, stick it out of it, sells, all right. We were better off with those guys than we are now with the supposedly hip young executives who are making the decisions of what people should see and hear in the marketplace. Success in the music business begins with a dream, a vision. This podcast will give you, the listener, the insight and tools to turn that vision into a reality. Meet the industry professionals who work day by day behind the scenes, helping to make those dreams come true. Welcome to the business side of music. In the studio with us today here in Nashville, Tennessee, it's been a while since you've been here. It has been a couple of years. A couple of years at least. Vinny Rebus, who is the founder and CEO of IndieConnect, is joining us across the table today. You have a new project you're working on. I'm so excited. I'm excited about this one, too. This is something that is maybe a little different than the norm of what we've talked about in the past, but it's definitely something we need. And it's for the independent artist, and it's called Cartney. Yes, it is. And it's basically a program, from what I understand, to help the independent artist safely navigate. (laughs) I guess that's the way to put it. Safely navigate the muddy waters out there. Right. And avoid the sharks and the bottom feeders and the people that just, we like to call them, they they like to take the 401k money. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. um, And that's a portion of it. You know, avoiding the scams and everything, that's a portion of it. Yeah. Uh, The other part of it is really teaching them, you know, I've coached over a thousand artists over the last 10 years. Right. And so it's, I hear the same questions and the same challenges over and over again. How do I get my music into film and TV? How do I protect my band name? How do I protect my song? On and on. And so we've identified over 270 so far different questions like that, how-to questions that we're interviewing industry experts on so that we're getting really expert advice on all these different topics. 10 minute videos, maybe two or three in a series, but you know, short bite-sized pieces, very, very, very consumable, very, very searchable as well. So the transcripts will be there, the audio version will be there. So you can put in, you know, literally that question and you'll get exactly the answer that you're looking for. Let's back up just a moment if you don't mind. Why and how? What was the motive behind this getting it started? What was generating this idea in the very beginning? Because you've done a lot of things and you've worked with a lot of artists and and have been down many paths. Mm -hmm. So why this? When I first started IndieConnect, which was in 2009, I set up a mission statement which said, I want to make it feasible and viable for anyone who chooses a career in the music industry to be able to build a career that is profitable, scalable, you know, something that they can, to make it feasible for anybody. And when we talk about a career, a career is many different things. You, right. you don't have to be a multi-platinum artist. Exactly. To be successful. Exactly. But, you know, it's it's about, as long as they have the, the skill, whatever skill they need or talent, and they have the passion, they have the drive. I want to, you know, there's got to be a clear-cut path. And so I've tried a lot of different things over the years. I tried taking Indie Connect and making it a membership organization. We had six meetings every week going on around town. You know, you were running some of them. Yep. And uh, at one point, I had 10 other cities going uh, around the country. And uh, that didn't quite pan out, trying to find the right leaders, people who know the marketing side, know have enough contacts to make it work. Um, We tried a membership organization. I actually, the precursor to what I'm doing right now is I started Indie Connect TV. And that was basically doing exactly what I'm doing, but going online, going on YouTube, and finding the answers to all the questions that we're talking about. The challenge I had is exactly what, same challenge that all the artists have. You go look for a video to get a certain answer, and you're going to fight through spam. You're going to fight through all these sales pitches. You're going to fight through all these longer videos that don't quite get to the point or don't get to the point till hour two or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just really difficult to find exactly what you're looking for. And so, you know, if you're a doctor, you belong to a medical library. 
You go there to get your answers. If you're a lawyer, you belong to a law library. But the music industry doesn't have anything like that. And so, you know, I wanted to create something that was so easy for people to, to navigate that they can get all the basic answers. I'm not going to be able to make anybody rich. I'm not going to be able to guarantee anything. But if they're not leaving money on the table because they know more about the industry, if they're avoiding scams because they're, they know more about the industry, you know, all these things are really critical and them at least being able to sustain themselves until they're making enough money and then, you know, and then beyond, you know, to be able to keep that up and everything. So it's just a matter of wanting to help more people than I can just coaching and doing one-on-ones or small groups. We have a lot of people come to this town, Nashville, Tennessee. It's the same thing, Los Angeles, Austin, New York, Chicago, whatever the major media market is. And ours just happens to really focus around the music business. Every day, somebody's coming to town and every day somebody's getting taken. Mm -hmm. Every day somebody leaves with their tail between their legs. Mm -hmm. How do you find those people before that happens or how do they find this? Well, we've been doing a lot of research and then we're going through like all the social media. Just last night, I found somebody on TikTok who was talking about um, a scam that somebody's trying to pitch to her and she fortunately, you know, just didn't pay attention to it. But I asked her about it, you know, I DM'd her and I said, you know, what is this about? And it's a birthday scam. And it was basically somebody who contacted her, said, I want you to write me a birthday song. I'll pay you $500. I'll send you a check for 200 now. They sent a check for 200 but it turned out to be a check for 2000 She deposited it. Uh, they said, oh, send me the, the $1,500. You can keep the whole 500 but send me the 1500 She did, and then that check was bogus that they had paid her, and so she's out $1,500. Wow. This girl didn't go for that, but she told me to look it up online, and it's just really prominent. In fact, there's a whole article on somebody here in Nashville who fell for that. So it's that kind of stuff. We're just doing the research. And then, I mean, obviously, I've been in the industry a long time. You've been in the industry a long time. We can rattle a bunch of these off the top of our heads, whether it's, you know, actual scams like that, or it's a producer who's trying to steal your intellectual property, saying, I own a piece of your masters. I own, I need songwriting credits. There's just so many different ways that people, you know, bad management deals. I had one gal that, yeah, the first week that she came into town, she was 18 years old. She got two offers for management. One of them had never even seen her perform. And the contracts were disastrous. I mean, I, I just have all of these stories. And, and it just, it makes me mad every time I see it. And it makes my blood boil, actually, especially when it happens to somebody you know. And, you know, having run so many networking meetings and, and, and coached so many people, you just hear them all the time. Well, so let's get back to that question. So you have something in place to help shortstop this. Mm -hmm. But how do you find those people, you know, like her or someone else, the, the birthday song girl, how do you find them and, and hopefully educate them before they make that first step off the cliff that is hard to climb back up of? Well, the whole idea behind the series is we're calling it the Before You series. And so it's before you sign a management deal, before you go looking for a manager, before you hire your first producer, before you do, you know, and we have 65 different areas like that. It's not necessarily scams. Sometimes it's just where there's bad apples. It's people that are, are taking advantage of people. You know, and I'll just give you an example. We have a couple that came to one of my early Indie Connect meetings. They were just married. They had just moved to town. They met somebody who said, I can produce your EP. They produced a five-song EP. It charged them $25,000. It was on credit cards. The producer was the one that found the songs. The songs were great. One of the songs had never been recorded and wasn't cleared through the publisher. And if you know anything about copyright law, if you own the song, you have the right to say who's going to record the song first. So they had no right to do this. So she had a thousand CDs, had just paid $25,000 for this EP, and she couldn't do anything with them. And it was all on credit cards. And my guess is she's still paying it off. Yeah. 13 years later. So those kind of things... If it becomes a habit where before you do anything for the first time, you go to this site and you look up, okay, what I'm trying to do is get my songs into film and TV. So let me look up how people scam people on that. You know, let me pitch your songs. Let me, let me do this. It's right. only $500 a month and you'll make thousands. Yeah. I mean, it's that kind of stuff. So it's just warnings. Before you do this, before you make any kind of move, before you, you know, buy a, a, uh, an online directory, you know, it's just simple things that, that people do all the time before you sign up for a songwriting contest. 
competition. Or pay somebody to, to shop you to a label, which people do. Or pay a song plugger. You need to know how people get ripped off in this industry and what, what all the warning signs are. There are actual honest-to-goodness people Absolutely. out there that are, are doing those things. And so you really have to kind of suss out the weeds right. and sift through that, that chaff to find those good people. Mm -hmm. And is there a way to do that? Well, and that's what we, you know, we're talking to the people who we know are reputable and asking them about, you know, how people contact you. How do you get your customers and everything so people will know, well, you know, I don't just advertise on the, on the Internet. I can't do that. I'm a publisher. And this is, you know, but you get ads for publishers saying, you know, we'll, we'll publish your songs. It's only $300. Right. You know, and, right. Um, and they're just taking advantage of people. So, yeah, in, in each of the videos, we'll not only say, you know, before you do this, here's what you need to look for. It's also, okay, this is what you need to do. This is how you reach, research these people. This is who you can tap into. These, maybe this is an organization you can contact. You know, we really want to make sure that everybody has that that pathway to verifying anybody that's out there. And, you know, and of course, it's going to constantly, constantly evolve and people change their scams and, and, and ways that they rip people off. So one of the big things that we're promising on this is that every six months we go back and revamp everything, make sure that everything is up to date, because that's one of the biggest challenges with all the information that you get out there. Some of it is great and it's going to be perennial. It's going to be, you know, be forever. But some of it is dated and things happen differently. So that's really important to us. I think the relevancy issue is really important because this industry is constantly changing. Oh, absolutely. And evolving. Absolutely. And I don't care who you are, whether you're Full Sail and, or Belmont or any of the colleges like that, they can't turn on a dime. They can't keep up with everything that's going on. And we're, it's going to be hard enough for us to do it. But that's, you know, my goal is to have a whole team of researchers and they're doing nothing but that and making sure that we are accurate. And if, if a video, we have a video up and it needs to be edited, it needs to be annotated, whatever, we're going to go ahead and do that to make sure that we're up to date all the time. In the studio with us today here in Nashville, Tennessee, Vinny Rebus, who is the CEO and founder of IndyConnect. We're talking about his new project, which is called Cartney. Hey, friends, this is Angela Mick Houston with Music Strong, and I am here with Bob Bender on the music side of business wrong thing. <laughs> The music side of business. <laughs> I just kept you reading the thing. Let me try that again. Hey, friends, this is Angela McHouston of Music Strong, and I am here with Bob Bender on the business side of music. You're listening to the business side of music. Hi, everyone. I'm Larry Butler, and I want to send you a free digital copy of my new book, The Singer Songwriter Rule Book 101 Ways to Help You Improve Your Chances of Success. That's right. Everything you need to know to launch your career as a singer-songwriter, all based on my 40 years in the live performance arena. And believe me, I've seen it all. In my book, you'll find the 10 things you have to deal with before even thinking about becoming a singer-songwriter-performer. You'll also learn about the five things every singer-songwriter can do this weekend to make their live show better. Five things I can guarantee that you are not doing already. Plus, there's tips on songwriting and staging, photo and video shoots, publishing, merch, dozens of other topics, all written for people who don't particularly like to read. And again, it's free. Just go to the Business Side of Music website homepage and look for my book cover. Click on it, and a free digital copy of my book will be yours. I'm Larry Butler, and I approve of this message. Whether you consider yourself a musician or not, music is all around us and it affects our everyday lives. Whether it's background music influencing our shopping habits in a store, organ music adding the vibe to a baseball game, or a playlist convincing us to keep going on that last mile of a run. I'm Mindy Peterson, host of the podcast Enhanced Life with Music, where we take a holistic look at music's benefits through the lens of science and medicine, entertainment, and business. You can find me and Enhanced Life with Music at mpetersonmusic.com slash podcast or wherever you get your audio. You're listening to the business side of music. One of the things that I notice in, in the show notes when you and I were talking and putting things together is you're seeking input to mm -hmm. address the issues of what needs to be brought to people's attention mm -hmm. 
Are you finding any surprises as you're doing this research that something you maybe went, gee, I didn't think about going down that path, or you're pretty much finding that it's the same thing over and over? When it comes to the scams, I'm finding new ones. Really? Definitely. Yeah. You know, just like this birthday one. I knew that this kind of scam happened to people, you know, people sending them more money than they were supposed to and then asking them to return. I knew that was an ongoing thing. I never thought of it that somebody would contact somebody who, she said, I only have 150 followers. You know, I was surprised that they would contact me, but you know, $500 looks good. And so, yeah, I'm finding out about that. As far as the, the industry stuff and, and all the how-tos and everything, not really any surprises. Yeah. And that's the reason we can do this. It's just because it's the same stuff over and over again. You know, if you look at the Cartney site and, and you go to the tab that says music industry videos, I've got the 270 questions on there. And you can see you know, I have them divided up into categories. And I'm just, you know, interviewing. I, I want to interview you. And I want to interview you about podcasting as well as maybe tour, tour management. Which is funny because when you talk about that, it's we deal with the same thing in the podcasting world where people reach out to us all the time and say, hey, I can make you a ton of money or I mm -hmm. can increase your followers or your listenership tenfold or a hundredfold. Just send me a check for... That's right. Fill in the blank. And we have to be real careful about that because we get those at least once a week, if not more often. So I imagine it's the same thing, if not greater in in just the music industry the music world it's crazy i mean the ads that they get the, the promises that people make and the sad part is some of it is just plain illegal or it's just totally found out like paying for to be on a playlist spotify when they find out about that they'll ban you and and i w was watching social media last week and i ran into a person who her label was buying followers and paying to be on playlists. Spotify shut the label down. They disappeared. Her songs are off the internet. They won't take them back because they have the ISRC code that has ban been banned now. Right. And her and the other 10 artists that were on the label are just left high and dry. And that's something else we have to take into consideration. And, and I'm assuming it's a topic you're going to cover. And that's ownership of your music, the music that you create, that you copyright, that you get ISRC codes for. And, and I talk to a lot of creative people who go, what's an ISRC mm -hmm. code? <laughs> and taking ownership of your, of your baby, of your project, because that, at the end of the day, is how you control those dynamics. What you just said, Absolutely. Spotify will now not play these collection of songs because simply based on the ISRC code has now got a black flag on it. Right. And so you have to understand those things. I'm sure when this person who recorded these songs, I'm assuming, but they probably didn't understand the world of ISRC codes and whoever the record label, quote unquote, was said, oh, we'll take care of it. And now it's come back to bite them in the butt. So is this going to be like one of the topics of conversation? I hadn't thought of it in that matter, but yes. Well, I'm glad I can bring I, it up. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. we do have something about what is an ISRC code. That was one of the questions. Yeah. And why do you need one? But I hadn't thought about it in that sense. And there's going to be a lot of connecting the dots. Yeah. A lot of connecting. The, I mean, I never thought about doing something about, you know, we're, we want to do a piece on how do I start a podcast? Because a lot of musicians want to do when that. When you figure that out, let me know, would you? <laughs> but. I never thought about the scams in the podcast area being the same as in the music industry. Yeah. You know, I started a Kickstarter campaign for this, but I probably got 20 people immediately. You know, we can boost your followers, you know, your, your money. and Not actual Kickstarter pledges, but people that for a fee can help. Yep. Let's talk about the people that you're going to have as, I don't know if experts is the word mm -hmm. that we want to use, but you're going to have a, a list of people that are going to be providing information. They're going to be providing facts. They're going to be part of an interview process, I guess, mm -hmm. from what I understand. How many people do you think you're going to have all together by the time you get this thing finished? Maybe I should say, how many different topics of conversation with these people providing do you think you're going to have? There's probably 25 topics. That's a good way to start. I mean, if you look at what we've done, and I mean, obviously there's no way for you to do it, but what we're doing is we identified the topics, we figured out a bunch of the questions that we need to ask, and then constantly I'll see something online, oh, we got to add that in here, we got to add that in here. It started out as 200 two months ago, now it's 270. But we go in to every single question and we do a mind map, and we look at you know, all the questions that we need to ask about this topic. 
So if it's, you know, do I need a manager? It's going to be all the different things about, you know, what a manager does, knowing what a manager does, knowing how to choose the right manager, you know, knowing when you need a manager. I mean, just whatever questions we need to ask. And so once we have that flushed out, we download it as an outline. We put it into an order. So there's a, you know, it's a full interview with all the questions outlined up front. People know what they're going to answer. Right. And that way we're, we're really flushing it out. And I actually have a, a new program for $15 a month. You can be a part of that process to flush out the questions. You can be on the, the interviews, any of the remote interviews that we do. You can be an audience member on that. And we'll do a weekly coaching online group coaching. When you say weekly group coaching, how many people typically in a group and do they have all the same interests? Yeah, it's, it's usually, and they don't usually always have the same interests. Okay. It's usually about 20 people. And what happens is just like our, our networking meetings, everybody's helping each other. So it's not necessarily me helping everybody, although I do most of it. But it's, oh, I've got a contact. I'd like to co-write with you. This is how I solve that problem. It's almost like a virtual mixer mm -hmm. of, of sussing out, you know, information. Right. And I think that's so important. I know that any of the industry mixers that we attend for the, the business side of music, it's always good, first of all, to have business cards not only to pass out, but then also to collect other business mm -hmm. cards, because you never know where something, you know, where that square peg is actually going to fit in a square right. hole that has been maybe missing. And so to me, that's a good idea to have these weekly group coaching sessions mm -hmm. to where people can, you know, really find out maybe as you and I are just talking here, hey, maybe this is something that we could cover. And four brains are better than two and, sure. you know, eight brains are better than four type thing. I want to put a team together that is doing this. You know, the industry has really taken an interest in this. You know, I put posted on LinkedIn. First of all, I, I started a newsletter on LinkedIn three weeks ago. Immediately, I had 1,700 subscribers the first day because of the interest. I've put in there, I'm looking for industry professionals. I've got huge producers contacting me. I've got Gosh, one guy contacted me. He's a producer, but he's been the drummer for all kinds of acts. And he's also a TV executive. And his two kids are the stars of Modern Family. And I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And, and he was enthralled with what we're doing and wants to be a part of it. So the, the level of people that are coming out of the woodwork, plus the people that I know, are amazing. You know, tomorrow I'm uh, interviewing Sid Justin. Sid took Smokey Robinson's place in The Miracles. And then the Scott Welches and stuff who are just, you know, high level, have done tons of stuff, the people that I know. The industry legends. Industry legends. But also, we're looking at independent artists who are doing something unique, like Jason Lyle Black. How do you get into theaters? You know, how do you marry comedy with what you're doing? How do you get onto cruise ships? You know, what's it like to be a cruise ship headliner, a theater headliner? What's the difference between that and what you were doing before? And then Rob Andres, I don't know if you know Rob, but you know, he's been on the cruise ships for 10 years, so he'll be on the same video, and we'll talk about being you know, just a cruise ship entertainer, not a headliner. And so that'll, we'll have a whole video on cruise ships. And it's literally something to take into consideration. It's a steady paycheck. Mm -hmm. You've got a roof over your head, even though it's in, on the ocean. And you literally have a captive audience for three or five days a week, and then it wash, rinse, repeat. You, you just keep doing it over and over. I did it for six months down in the Caribbean and three months in Europe, and I loved it. Loved it. It's a great way to help build your fan base, too, I would and think. And save of. money. If you stay with the cruises, you're eventually going to get another audience. There, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's a turnover rate Oh, yeah, rate every there. week. Yeah, yeah. In, in most cases, yeah. every week you've got a different audience. So, so, so everything is new. you build a little bit of a fan base you can. just off of that, yeah. You can. And, I mean, Rob will tell you that he's got people who will f go on different ships. They ask him what ships he's going to be on, and then they go on it. So, nice. I mean, that's pretty loyal. Yeah. So it, it's a different world, but you're right. I mean, it, it's, it's a steady paycheck. They pay for everything. I mean, they, they covered everything except the tips for laundry. You know, I mean, that's the only thing we had that we had to pay for. And we, that was volunteer, of course, but you wouldn't get your laundry very clean if you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> and you got to see the world. Got to see the world. Yeah. Three hours at a time. <laughs> In the studio with us today, Vinny Rebus, who is the founder and CEO of IndyConnect, who's talking about his new company that we're trying to focus on here, Cartney. Hey, this is Matt Lutz from Music Benefactors. Check out my episode on the business side of music. 
Hey, I'd like you to check out my buddy John Adams' company, Money Concepts. As a musician, you have a dream. That vision is what success looks like for you. Though it's not only about the money, money is absolutely part of it. Whether you've been extremely successful or you're just striving to maintain a regular cash flow, you do need a plan. Money Concepts can help you develop a customized plan to achieve the financial stability and the success you want. For over 40 years, Money Concepts has been providing holistic financial planning services to the individuals, families, and business owners. As an independent firm, Money Concepts and their associates are committed to always represent the best interest of their client. It's really about a committed, benevolent interest in them personally. This independence coupled with that committed benevolent interest means that they represent you, the client, not a product supplier. It's not about selling products. It's about helping you achieve success. To learn how this can benefit you, contact my buddy, John Adams with Money Concepts at 737-867-9309. That's 737-867-9309. You can also email John at jadams at moneyconcepts.com. Are you curious about Gordon Lightfoot's songwriting process or what it was like working with Prince in the 80s? Have you ever given any thought to what goes into a golf course design or writing a book? I'm Steve Waxman, the host of The Creationist, a podcast about people who create. Each episode features a different creator sharing stories that I hope will inspire your own creativity. The Creationist is available now on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Back in the studio, Vinny Rebus is joining us across the table. We're talking about Cartney. That's an interesting name in and itself. How did that come about? I was watching a Paul McCartney <laughs> video, <laughs> <laughs> and I was at the same time trying to think of something unique that nobody had used before. Yeah. And so I just looked up the domain. I said, I, this sounds cool. And so it doesn't have any meaning, except it does relate to the greatest songwriter, in my opinion, the greatest pop songwriter of all time. And it is a website that's up and running. People can go to it. We don't have the videos up yet, the active videos, but you can see what we're doing. You can really see all the, the questions that we're asking all the industry experts. We've got a list of about 50 of the industry experts so far that, that have said yes, but we have a lot more that have said yes. I just haven't updated the site. And then one area that we didn't talk about is I've got over 250 videos we're going to do on all the different careers in the music industry and outlining, you know, all the details of that. What does it take to get that? What does that person do? What kind of skills, what kind of training does it take? Education does it take? What's your day to day like? Where does it lead to? And of course, the salary range and stuff like that and how much you work. So people need to have a lot of, a lot of choices. How long do you think... It's going to take before this video series is, is up and running. My goal is that, that we get the scams done and those, at least a bunch of them, the most common ones, and those are free. I want them to be free because I want people to be protected. Then by, by the midsummer, say July, I'm hoping to have at least 50 of the, the how-to videos up there. And they'll be broken down in categories? They're broken down in categories. And then our guarantee will be, well, it'll be $10 a month. $10 a month to, to have access to them. Our guarantee will be we'll be adding 15 more every single month. And um, we'll have a pro level at $20 that'll have live events and meet and greets and, and workshops and stuff like that. But for the most part, the $10 one will get you access to all the videos. And 10 bucks is really just two cups of coffee. That's really not that much. It, it will save you so much time and so much money. And heartache. And heartache. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that... Once again, this is something that is vitally important for our industry. We all travel down the road to try and find success, and many times we trip over our own feet. Mm -hmm. But other times we kind of get sideswiped and knocked down, and you know we got to pick ourselves up and dust ourselves off and keep moving forward. So hopefully, this will eliminate some of those perils and pitfalls. Yeah, I mean we're saying that our goal is to take the mystery and the guesswork and the risk out of the industry. We can't take it all out, but if we can take the majority of that and, and people don't have to guess anymore, they can actually look up, this is what I'm trying to do, and here you, here you know is a guaranteed accurate answer. This is exactly how you do that. 
then we'll make it a lot easier for people. And some of it still falls back on the creative person using some common sense, thinking things through, but hopefully this will help open their eyes to where they can do that. Absolutely. That's the goal. The goal is to get them to think through it. So we can't tell you, this is how you're going to get your audience. We can't tell, because we don't know you. We don't know your music. We don't know your work ethic. We don't know anything about you. But we can tell you that these are the things you need to watch for. These are the things that you need to put in place. These are the, the puzzle pieces that you're probably missing. This is you know, where you're, you should be making money and you don't even know that it exists. You're leaving money on the table. It's just a perfect example is I was working with a, a Southern gospel artist and he was a lead singer of a very popular Southern gospel band. And then he went solo. And when I was working with him, he was already solo. He had had three top 40 Southern gospel hits. And I told him about Sound Exchange. He didn't know anything about it. So he went and registered with Sound Exchange, and they had $6,000 waiting for him. They also had tens of thousands for him as the lead singer of this other band. And I'm just not mentioning any names because I don't know that he would want me to, right. to tell the story. But unfortunately, the leader of that band had taken all that Sound Exchange money. So there had to be a court battle for him to get it. But I'm guessing $20,000, $30,000 just sitting there waiting for him. If he had known how the industry works, you know, and you know, because you were running Indie Connect meetings with me, we'd get people in there who were with labels and stuff and just saying, the labels did everything. I don't know what, what to do now. Right. And so, I mean, I, I had a lot of artists and hit songwriters and everything else that just didn't know how to, they made their mark and then it was gone or their contacts were gone or whatever. They were let, let go from the label, and they're just stuck. They don't know what to do. So this isn't just for the, for the, the new artist. It's for somebody who's you know, maybe getting out of touring and wants to figure out, what am I going to do now? Or somebody who decided that they've had their career, they're 50 years old, they want to quit that and go back into music, but don't know where to start. Yeah. Because nowadays, obviously, you can be any age and, and do any kind of music and still make your mark. I just had a conversation with a buddy of mine who is doing exactly that. He worked in, in the computer industry for many, many years. And he's now creating sound bites, different types of sound effects for film and television. And he says that's all he does all day. And he's getting paid for it. He's 65 years old. And he absolutely loves that. That's exactly what we're saying when we talk about the careers and that there's all these different opportunities that you can do. Yeah. All kinds. It's just knowing where to get started. Absolutely. And if you can plug, like our goal is to be able to say, these are my skills, these are my interests. And then all of a sudden, all of these videos come up, you know, and say, okay, these are the careers that would fit that, that pattern. And that makes it a lot easier. I mean, I get all these Belmont students that are interns and I love them to death. I've probably had a hundred of them over the last 10 years, easily a hundred of them. And they all come in with the same thing. I want to do A&R. I want to be a manager. Because they're the only roles they know. Yeah. You know, and there's hundreds of roles. I don't know all the roles. I've never been on a big tour like you have. You probably have tons of, of different career options within, you know, guitar techs and this and that that are part of the road crew. I wouldn't even know, wouldn't have a clue about. I've never been with a big orchestra. And there's a whole bunch of jobs that are around that, whether it's in the office or just on, on the support side, you know, on backstage and stuff. So somebody's got to shine a light on all this. And I don't know anybody else that's doing it, so pick me. It's time. It is time. How can they find the website? It's cartney.com, C-A-R-T-N-E. On there, we, you can see what we're trying to do. There is a place where if you are an industry professional, you can sign up and, and say that you want to be interviewed. And when I say industry professional, that could be anybody, an artist, it doesn't matter, anybody who just has some experience that you want to share. Like we were talking during the break about, you know, being a cruise musician, cruise ship musician. And, you know, I've got people that are going to explain what that's about, what you do on a day to day basis, how they got the gig and stuff like that. So anybody that's got any kind of, of experience or expertise that they want to share, we'd love to hear from you. There's a place to put if you have ever been or come across a scam or a ripoff. And, you know, we don't, we're not necessarily looking for names. We're not going to have a, a list of, of bad actors or anything. But we want to hear about that. And then we also, we have a mailing list on there if somebody wants to just keep abreast of what we're doing. So it's cartney.com. We just started a program. This is going to be very limited, but it's pre-launch program. For each of these topics, we go ahead and mastermind them with my, my team. and 
we flush out all the questions that need to be asked. And if you want to be a part of that process and you want to be a part of the process of actually watching the interviews, participating in that, and then getting coaching once a week, we're going to be doing small group coaching. It's $15 a month and it's an incredible deal. But the whole idea is to get people excited about Cartney and to get people who are interested in in being able to share the power behind the videos and stuff, the things that we're doing. So I'm trying to basically build my audience. And then you'll get, you know, our two memberships will be $10 and $20. And you'll get the $20 membership staying at $15 when we launch. Vinny, thank you so much. Always a pleasure to have you in the studio. Thank you, sir. It's always wonderful to be here. The business side of music is the creation of Tom Sabella and Tracy Snow and is produced by Bob Bender. The business side of music is recorded at Music Dog Studios in Nashville, Tennessee. Production sound design by Keith Stark. Voiceover and promo by Lisa Buson.